Sunday, thank you so much for staying with us. I've been hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju and Chris Kende Wandu. Gentlemen, well done. Now let's move on to other matters. The crackdown on bandits terrorizing Nigeria has been intensified to keep the country safe. The Nigerian police paraded a dismissed officer of the Nigerian Air Force for allegedly supplying military camouflage and arms belonging to security operatives to notorious bandit Belo Turji. Meanwhile, bandits killed nine people in Kwasam Kwaru local government area of Kaduna State. The bandits also abducted five other people, including a retired director of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Zakaria Marcus, his brother, and the brother's wife. Sikia, let me start with you. It is uh, it's getting hotter and hotter mm. by the day. And um, it is more annoying that at this point, you also have security agencies also aiding some of this. And we've seen time and time again that most of the time, what is happening within this is that we also have insiders, even within the security agencies, that are doing some of these things. Mm. If you look at the level of oil bunker in Nigeria, say our security agents are, some of them are mm. fully enshrined that. In fact, as journalists, we have reports that some people pay so much for them to be posted to certain areas. Yes, yes especially in the Niger Delta. So that is why oil bunker cannot stop in Nigeria. Then security, look at this guy that is supplying camouflage. Is there some camouflage we're talking about? Even guns. Because you, want, you need to ask yourself, how do they, where do they get the guns from? Through the borders and all sorts. Mm. And why I'm going for that, Dad? Let me, let me quickly chip in this. There was something that happened two days ago, or three days in Abuja. And we need to commend an Ecomodo a top security officer in the Air Force, who witnessed a robbery incident. The one chance, one chance, I'm sure you must have seen it already, one chance incident in Abuja, mm. where this one chance people were carrying somebody away, two people away. And the officer was coming back from work. And he has to use his official vehicle to, to wage those guys, and they ran into his vehicle. Saw the video. And you, so I'm sure you must have seen the video. the video. And he ran after them, and they picked them and were able to arrest them. This guy is damaged. I'm sure the chief of uh, air staff or the FCT minister may provide the winner. But that is gallantry. But what we're talking about, when we're talking about this, the fact remains that in as much as security agencies are doing their best to be able to checkmate what is going on, there are still some people within the system. Before it used to be the police. You will see people hiding out. If you see the level of robbery, that means that is where people... Go, the policemen go into the armories, hire out guns to arm robbers, and collect something in return. And you continue to ask yourself, what is happening? So this particular incident that happened is, 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 nothing, is nothing new. But the fact is that we must put, the security agency must also put some searchlights in as much as there. Because ask yourself, for goodness sake, how come that our security agencies will be going after certain bandits and the rest mm -hmm. of them? Before they get halfway, the bandits are already have information that they are coming. And they attack them and kill them. That means some people are supplying them those information in-house. And that is what we need to deal with. It's not just a, 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 a problem in Nigeria. They're, even if you go to advanced countries, we've heard about spies mm -hmm. <laughs> in some countries. We have certain individuals that, even those in government, you will not believe. You see that they are diplomats or whatever. You don't know that what they are doing as well. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that in as much as we continue to put, uh, hold these guys accountable, we'll make sure that we arrest, kill as many as we can as it were, because it is no longer a question I don't believe in this amnesty we are talking about every time we can, then we say we are giving them amnesty this is not working, this amnesty is not working Ikeo, you remember a story we discussed here, JH on Sunday where customs intercepted large quantities of uh, uh, ammunition camouflage in Lagos and we were here wondering where are these items coming from, for what purpose to what end you know, Boko Haram are the height of their powers mm -hmm imported um, military uh, camouflage and um, these um, satellite phones what do they used to call um, what was this name for satellite phones? Uh, yes, before the yes. era of GSM. Mm. You know with it wherever you go mm. you can use the phone. Mm. So Boko Haram imported them into the country and they were seized at um, uh, the airport here. So there are sponsors who make a lot of money
from their activities, um, provide money for them to buy weapons in the black market and all that. So these things happen. But there are people in the armed forces who sell uniforms to bandits, who rent out their guns and ammunition to bandits. Mm -hmm. I remember the middle pass um, chief of defense staff lamenting that the rate at which soldiers were helping bandits had become alarming. Mm -hmm. The rate at which soldiers were helping terrorists was a concern for him. And he listed some of those courts in the act. And I was alarmed that this uh, uh, something this big was happening. I'm like, ah, ah. all of these soldiers involved in helping the enemy. So there is a collapse of discipline. That kind of collapse that will make a soldier look into the camera and be abusing a governor and other people. We were not hearing of such things before. Because was it during the military era that a soldier will get up and be abusing a state governor? It never happened. It never happened. It's still part of the abuse of social media that we're talking, we're talking about. about. Now, the armed forces must realize that they have fifth columnists within them. And they must do their best to exterminate this fifth column because they are the ones who provide information to bandits about troops' movement. We are talking about someone supplying Belo Turji. Why are we surprised that up till now we've not been able to kill Belo Turji? Okay. How do we kill Belo Turji when they, we will get information about uh, movement of troops when they are going to bomb him and all that? I mean, these guys are not spirits, but all of those major bandit leaders. We've not killed a single one. We've not killed a single one. Every time I read a story, that bandit leader, uh, I will rush to go and check the name, uh, whether Dogo Gide is there, whether Kachala is there, whether Velo Tuji is there. I will see that they are not there. So which one have we killed? The big, the, the big, big bandit leaders, we are unable to kill them. Even Buhari Ndaji was killed by Dogo Gide, a fellow Bandit. Not that we successfully killed him. He stole cattle belonging to Dogo Gide's in-laws. And that one said, no, you can't do this. Return the uh, cattle that you stole from my in-laws. He didn't listen. Dogo Gide were, went back with his own uh, fighters. And they killed him and left his corpse in, uh, uh, in the forest there in Zamfara. The thing was rotting before soldiers came to take it away. So. We have a big problem. When you look at what is happening, even in Kaduna, in Igabi, in um, so many parts of Kaduna, and bandits are still harassing our people. Look at the story of uh, two persons who, who, at gunpoint, were forced to lead them to the home of a CBN, a top official of CBN, who was then taken away. You know? Now they are, they are, it's just uh, the people do not have the guns to save themselves from these outlaws. They don't have, the people don't have the kind of weapons at the disposal of Belo Tuji, uh, Kachala, uh, Dogo Gide, uh, and the rest of them. But we rely on the armed forces. The armed forces has to do their work dispassionately and truthfully and identify the bad eggs. Unfortunately, even Boko Haram during his early years, their, their fighters were trained by some people who had retired from the army, mm -hmm. or maybe deserters, you know? Mm -hmm. All of those warrant officers, they were the ones who went to train them on how to handle guns. Mm -hmm. Even how can Boko Haram enter an armor tank and be driving? Mm -hmm. And we're saying that they will capture armor tank from the army and they would uh, ride it by themselves. That means some of those people were given training. But so just, uh, oh. I, I am worried about the fact that insecurity uh, has uh, become such a big problem. But a situation in which someone can get 10 sets of mil military camouflage and all that is, is not working alone. If they arrest, if they, if they thoroughly grill him, is going to mention other people working with him. The people, 
probably those still in he is he has left the force but there are people who are still in the force who must be working with him for him to be able to lay his hands on this kind of um, um, uh, camouflage and other accessories that they found, uh, they found mm -hmm. with him. Well, BQ, uh, CK, and also worrisome is this part that says uh, the ex-officer served for only five years but, and was court-martialed by the military for a year to be reviewed offense. Yeah, you know, it, it, that's a fact. But let me also put it across that. We have come to find out that most of the time, most of these kidnappings, banditry, especially even kidnapping now, what most of those guys we are military camouflage. You see them, they stop, they are the express. Are you think that it's just normal, yeah, normal, soldiers. normal soldiers? That's what they have been doing. Mm. If you look at what happened, like the one that a particular transport company, that the passengers were picked, mm. and um, the, 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 I'm sure you saw that video, we are, and, and the driver was killed. Mm. From the narration from those that were there, they said that we saw them, that they were wearing military, you know, Nigeria, uniform is uniform, you just see, anybody can, they get, most of those things, they get them across the border here. Most of the time they get, even some individuals now, that's why you see, at times, when you see military doing certain things, at times people just get, and they go, why they? That's why they say, stop wearing military mm -hmm. camouflage. Mm -hmm. I personally agree with that. If you are not a military person, in fact, I think there was a circular that came out a few days ago that certain but our military agencies yeah, them. should mm -hmm. not wear camouflage again. It has been totally yeah, abused. And you are talking about the guy was dismissed five years ago, uh, or dismissed recently for an undisclosed. What were those undisclosed reasons? Why is it that we are not making this it's public? Possible that, uh, it's possible that it, it's possible that this, that was what happened. And they just allow him to go. And you ask yourself, apart from and that is part of the problem they were having. Remember Most, the uh, of uh, robbery? Yes, yes. Remember one uh, South guy mm -hmm. who was part of part, part of them, yes. And he too had been dismissed yeah. for selling weapons, weapons to, to the distance. Um, uh, arm robbers. Yes. He eventually now joined, after they chased him away from the uh, police, he now joined the robbery gang. Yes. And because, came with them to rob the bank. Just as Jesus said, let me tell you, you cannot just, you cannot just, I cannot just pick up AK-47 now and be shooting now. These people had training. Mm. And if you see the level of what, the kind of things they do, you, they, I, I was told how they work. Those are the, the ones that kidnap people. You see that they have about two, three checks. The first check, you think you've gone beyond it. You see the second check, you see the third check. These guys are so thorough that have been learning. So that is why I'm saying that within the military themselves, they need to find if you are dismissing somebody, is it not just dismissing him? Are you making sure that he is being he's punished? If you cannot handle this, I did yeah, it. Should should go go after the court martial, that's why you should go to the, should then go to to the, the police, regular regular court. courts for yeah, for prosecution. So that we can jail him. But most of the time they don't do that. They just dismiss them, they rank them, remove their name from, and, and just allow them to go. And then they become then they become they even be, they become worse. Yeah. They become worse. All right, gentlemen, let's take Olomu. Good afternoon oh. to you. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Please go ahead with your conclusion. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Yes, Olomo from Milan. Thank you so much. All right, welcome. Thanks. I really commend the effort of uh, BQ, uh, the, my brother in the, the studio. Thank, Thank you. you. How, how is Quara? Governors, doing what they are doing in India is very very practical. The institution in Nigeria now is very abusive. I, I, we just pray that they think twice before they do anything, and they have the uh, the the love for people as cars. Well, four years is is, is is just like yes, and it's it's not finished. So may God help Nigeria. Thank you so much. All right, thank, thank you, you so you, much, Mr. Lomo. All right, Biki, any final word on this? Mm. Right. So there's nothing we can do about. I mean, when we dismiss airing officers and we just let them go like that, is there nothing we can do to? perhaps reorientate or, I mean, make them better citizens? The best option would have been to get them prosecuted and put in prison. But in fact, it remains that when you send them to prison, they won't become worse. Mm -hmm. There are instances now we send so many people into Nigerian prison, they come, they come out worse than they were. In fact, there have been instances and there have been reports where that they get there, they start forming other gangs, mm -hmm. armed robbing gangs, and they come out and they continue from there. And that is what we've been saying time and time again. If you go to the Nigerian prisons, our correctional homes, you see that close to about 50% or 60% of the people there are awaiting trial. Mm. 
They have not been convicted. And that's safe, become a breathing ground. But that does not stop us from making sure that people that are found what, this kind of, this are not prosecuted. You can't just dismiss somebody. You don't, they didn't give us what, they didn't tell us what he did. But it will not be far-fetched that this must have been what he has been doing. And he must have other collaborators who are still within the systems who may be able to supply those things right. to him, which will now sell off. Thank you, Sikir. And let's move on to other matters. The gladiators for the 2024 Edo State Governorship election are emerging.